Good morning, Abaco. Good morning, Abaconians. Kai Mills, by way of video, is trying to make Abaco great again. That has been my fight. While everybody thinks that Kai was saying the wrong thing, he's not being politically correct, he's not using the words that they should use, I'm being angry, I'm being this, that, and the other. This is Kai's story. Remember, you're on WCAY. This is my network. I pay national insurance for this. And if you want to do it your way, go by all means. Show up. That is what's wrong with Abaco. Everybody knew that there was a Haitian problem. And we are we were so naive that um, we stopped talking. Like in Abaco, I got a lot of Haitian friends, and they used to get upset when you started to speak Creole. Oh, dare you speak Creole to me in Abaco? Like it's an insult for Kai Mills to speak Creole to the people that I grew up with, they begin to, in their own way, try to stop you from saying and thinking what you want to on the Haitian situation. Um, during the hurricane, 12 hours before a Category 5 hurricane, um, you had the uh, pastor from Seventh-day Adventists with a bullhorn inside the mud, telling them about this hurricane and the devastation on a slow-moving Category 4 at the time. It was 4 at the time. I was on the outskirts doing a video, and I was calling it the before and after video, and trying to educate people in the mud, the younger ones, that it is time to move. Uh, you know what they did with me? They stoned me. Throw rocks on my car, almost break my window, and that was a little heartful, you know. And the thing about the mud, there's a silence there. There's a lady that I knew. I just finished um, bringing some people there to give us some money. So she knew me personally. And I asked her, what's that boy name? One that was brutal. He's trying to rock fast. She said, I don't tell you nothing. And she gone in the house. I said, you could go in the house. But you, not a house, wouldn't be there after the hurricane. And this is a direct result what my prime minister did, and I thought that was so unnecessary. During the earthquake in Haiti, my brother Peter Joseph and all the hard-working men and women of the immigration department round up some two to 400 illegal criminals, gang members. And uh, for political reasons, you would think these Haitians stupid will there for them. So he said, you know what? Let my people go. No law, no nothing. He's, he was a dictator. He just like Papa Doc, got the same mentality. I call him Idi Amin Agafa. Um, he got the same mentality. Whatever he say back when he was prime minister, only him one God gives sense to. So they let all the Hubert Ingram people go. You know where they end up? In the mud and the peace. I tried so hard, me, while I was chief counselor, elected chief counselor, mayor of Marshall, to try to work with Hubert Ingham to try to lead to, to solve the problem in the mud. You would say, leave them people alone. Would not try any way to do something. Perry Christie, same thing. Then you have um, this prime minister, Dr. Minnis, um, who's going to, Everybody bragging that he's the only prime minister that's going to do something. Well, guess who he sent down there? The Shantytown Task Committee. The On Folks. Everybody know the On Hope Folks is a Haitian. And I don't know. I've never seen this before in my life. Everybody step on the Bahamas to achieve political gain. To get status to go to America. But they don't like the Bahamas at all. You think the On Folks first allegiance when they gone into the mud? was to the Bahamas government or was to his people. The honest the Haitian also. And I know he would his legion was into the Bahamas government when the on folks came out there and said the numbers was there. Eh, come on, the on. You got to think people stupid. That is not the numbers that comes in there. Then you have social service and, and, and this one kills me. Uh, um, and this one still bothers me. Frankie Campbell. And they talking to F&M and F&M playing fool. Frankie Campbell is a raw-bone Haitian. 
has no authority according to him. He came on the radio. Frankie was a policeman. He's well educated. So Frankie ain't gonna come on TV and lie on himself. Frankie came on TV and said, I'm a Haitian. I used to spend time in the graveyard. An old man came and signed for me my documents. My daddy wouldn't sign. So an old man in the community signed and say that his daddy had sex with his mother. That's how he became a Bohemian. That is illegal. And we see in Abaco, Frankie Campbell have no papers to be in this country, but he is a minister of social service. Who benefited for social service in Abaco? All the Haitians. Bohemians is very, 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 very seldom benefited because Frankie say one thing in English and then he talk to people in Creole. Every one of them, the legion is to Haiti and Haitians. They don't give a hell about Bohemians. You think that's bad. In Abaco, high school, 90% of the kids there are of Haitian parents. They're not even legal. They're not even old enough to become legal. They have to be 18. And the stupid thing is the, 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 the teachers, the people that are registering, they are telling Bohemians to go and carry their kids to private school and the Haitians are first in the high school, Patrick Bethel High School. Then you have CAPS. I was the mayor there, the chief counselor, and, 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 and the people said, you know what Moxie is? Sending Bohemian children home and registering Haitian children that can't speak English. You imagine. The government of the Bahamas is telling the teachers in Central Abaco Primary School to teach kids that can't speak English. Their first language is Creole. They have very little English skills. And the government said, y'all teach them Haitian English. That means the Bahamian kids have to fall asleep while they are left behind, while the government of the Bahamas is trying to educate and teach Haitian kids while Bahamians who pay the taxes, kids are left behind and they are asking the parents to force the parents to put them in private school when the parents hardly could afford grits, toner, and milk. And that is what the government of the Bahamas has been doing to my people in Abaco. And I always wonder why then they have a fight down there. The Haitian children beat the hell of the Bahamian kids. They have the numbers. 900 kids in the primary school, 700 is, ha is Haitian. A thousand kids in the primary school, 800 is Haitian. They are double us five to one. That is why um, the UN guy was here the other day, um, Antonio Guerrero, Secretary General of the United Nations. You know what the, the, boy, the fella say? And many people didn't pay attention to him. The Secretary General, Antonio, said that the Bahamas, boy, and I listened to him very clearly, is the only country in the world that more babies are being born to foreigners than Bohemian. He said the Bahamas is the only country in the world that the government is giving citizen to non-Bohemians more than any country in the world. Then he said this, the Bahamas is the only country in the world that neither government know what to do with the illegal problem. It has escalated to an enormous proportion that the Bahamian government doesn't realize that they are in a crisis because of the illegals that they allowed to roam throughout their country that now are numbering more than the Bohemians. You imagine in Abaco there was more illegals in the mud than in Dundas and Murphy Town proper? You imagine that Kai Mills drive a taxi and the police give me a ticket every week for picking up and dropping off. They were torn into me. Meanwhile, Right by the police traffic division, every Friday and Saturday, there is 500 to 2,000 illegals selling goods 
less than 50 to 100 yards from the Marsh Harbor Traffic Division. And while they are putting me before the courts because I speak, the Haitian was enriching themselves. They got bars, had bars, restaurant, drug ring, prostitution ring, gun ring, all the illegal stuff was in the mud. And more and more those turn a blind eye for all the time he was there. I never arrested any of them. But I was arrested because I called the police a drunk because he was stinker rum. I got arrested because I drive a taxi and I speak about the illegal stuff that was happening in my town. To date, 3,000 illegal had shops, water, light, telephone illegally in the mud. It is all because the government, the government is totally responsible for every life that was lost in the mud because they didn't um, discourage. They encourage. We had a guy that has his own power plant in the, in, in the mud. We told the, the, the authorities about it. Ain't no thing because they pay the authority and they go ahead and do business. Don't blame the Haitians for the Haitian problem. It is survival. They were trying to survive by all means necessary. Blame the weightless, no good, good for nothing government and government officials that handled their hands to these people that's trying to survive. And they didn't try to regulate them. They used the Haitians as slaves to enrich themselves. They're the worst kind of cockroaches. The government officials that are supposed to do the law, carry the law, they are reaching out to unsuspected migrants, poor people, and making money on the backs of the Haitians. And they thought that the Haitians were stupid, that the Haitians didn't know what they're doing. The Haitians use all the government agency because they are paying the government under the table, to be here. So the government had to give them medical, schools, because whatever monies they got, they were paying for, to the officials in Abaco. And the prime ministers never know better. They know what's going on. They allow the light, the water, the telephone to continue in the mud. It's early Tuesday. I'm just talking to you. and let you know, don't blame the Haitian. Blame our weightless government. You're here live on WCAY.